Yo, what's going on, Arkansas Razorback fans? In this video, we're going to talk about the Arkansas Razorbacks, their ceiling in 2023. What's their maximum potential? What do I think that could be? But of course, we're unable to do this content without Patreon supporters and without our sponsors, the Odd Soul Craft Bar and Pizzeria located on Emma Street in Springdale, and of course, the direct service overhead garage door company. If you need some work done or you need to replace your garage door, give them a give them a call. Their links are all available, including how to become a Patreon supporter, down below in the description box. All right, let's let's knock it out. Let's do this. Let's talk about Arkansas's potential, their ceiling in 2023. I know we all loved watching KJ run the ball 15 to 16 times a game, but we have to ask ourselves, did that play a role in him not being available for a couple of games, limiting Arkansas ceiling? You see, this is how this works when you talk about a ceiling. There are things that happen that are unseen and unknowable that kind of lower that ceiling. And without KJ, Arkansas ceiling drops a lot last year because of the QB two situation. And to me, it's although I think the quarterback room is better. I think Jacoby Criswell, I think, I think what they have going on there is better. KJ is the, he's the star here. He's the star in this offense between him and probably rocket Sanders. KJ has to be good to go, right? I mean, he's, he's got to be available for all 12 games, at least to get to where I think their ceiling is now. Last year, Maryland, uh, the younger Tug of Viola brother under Dan Enos, ran the ball an average of something like seven times a game. I think it was six or seven times a game. Now, you can argue Maryland's offense took a step back compared to 2021, but even then, it's it's not like the guy was running the ball a ton. KJ was sacked, what, 23 times in 2022. That number's got to come down. Uh, I, I really feel like a lot of 22 was on the shoulders of KJ's ability to run the ball. And I think in 23, that changes, and that's going to be a net positive for the Razorbacks. So what exactly does that mean? Well, it means one of two things. One being, well, you better buy yourselves front row tickets to the Rocket Sanders and the Arkansas running back show because their workload is going to increase, and that could, be a, that could be a real good thing for Arkansas. Or it means they're going to throw the ball that much more you know, making up for the uh, for for less KJ runs, so you're substituting that with him actually just throwing the ball more, uh, whether that's out of the RPO or whether it's just by design, whatever. One of those two things will happen, if not both. If we have a pretty good idea of what the running back situation is, what the personnel who's carrying the ball the most, and so on and so forth. If we have a pretty good idea of what's going on there, what about the passing game, the wide receivers and the tight ends? What are my thoughts here? Well. To sum it up pretty quickly, I really, really like what they did in the portal here. I like all the new additions. It's unfortunate we didn't get to see more Broden through spring camp, but I think he will have something to offer uh, in uh, in the fall. We'll have to wait and see kind of how that all unravels with him. But Varkey's Gums, I'm putting together a list of my top ten, well, really top five. I'm going to end up cutting it in half. But my top five to top ten favorite transfers for the Razorbacks this year. Gums is on the short list. I'll just, you know, there's a spoiler alert. I like him a lot. I think if he can, if he could prove that he's also he could block or whatever it is they need him to do there, he's going to find his way onto the field more in his production. I don't know, man. I think he could be a very, uh, very productive tight end in the passing game without a doubt. I, again, I love what they've done here. They Again, they all have something that they offer. Tesla, Armstrong, and Broden, they've all got good length, good size. Tesla is someone who has shown that he can he can make some pretty spectacular grabs, one-handed. Armstrong, all through spring camp, was just, I don't know that I saw him drop more than maybe a maybe one or two passes. He was very consistent. I like what these guys have to offer in the passing game. And uh, again, that's, of course, obvious as this is, but I'm going to say it, it's going to help elevate the offense. All right, Ty, you talked about the offense. What about the defense? What did they do in the offseason to get better? Well, we still got a little ways to go, right? we got to get through strength conditioning, and then we've got to get through fall camp. So we're not all the way through it just yet, and they've still they've got some spots left. 
that they could still add out of the portal. And at the time of making this video, I think they have 17 players uh, committed out of the portal. So there's still a little bit of work left to be done. But at the moment, I'll tell you, the best thing that could have happened to Arkansas was Barry Odom. It was him leaving. That's the best thing that could have happened for this defense. Listen, I'm not I'm not hating on the guy. I'm not saying he was a, a horrible defense coordinator. I just – it seemed like every year there was something broken about his defenses. They had some kind of deficiency somewhere that was just so obvious, and last year was the secondary. So what does Sam do? Well, he goes out and he hires arguably on paper – the best hire that he's made since becoming a head dog. And that's, that's hiring Marcus Woodson. He was the uh, defensive backs coach and the defensive passing game coordinator for Florida state in a year in which they finished fourth in the country in passing yards allowed, giving up just 165 yards a game through the air. That was pretty, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty special. And it was a good year for Florida state. And he obviously, he obviously played a pretty big role in that. They weren't done there. They then they go to the portal in the secondary and they go after Lorando Johnson and and uh, Al Walcott out of Baylor. Two big grabs out of the portal. They grab uh, Jayheim Singletary, a former five star corner out of high school who uh, committed and signed with Georgia. They pulled him out. Uh, they they got him out of the portal. AJ Brothwaite out of Western Kentucky. To me, it looks like they made a lot of right moves here in the secondary when you're talking about the coach the guy that's going to be coaching them, and the personnel that's going to be playing. Arkansas has done a good job at linebacker. you got to give credit to to Barry Odom and that staff and what they were able to do at the position. Pooh Paul is going to be a, you know, he's going to be an example of that. And now this staff, this new defensive staff, they have him to work with, and, and that's got to be a great feeling to have someone like Christopher Pooh Paul. I'm expecting big things out of this kid in 2023. Uh, Landon Jackson, defensive end, this guy got to be, Probably going to end up being your your. If he's not a star on the defense, he's he's going to be close to it for for Arkansas. I think he's certainly got a really high ceiling. And then you look at all the other transfers, guys like Jeff Coat out of out of Mizzou. A lot of people seem to think that he's going to contribute quite a bit. Anthony Booker and Rose. These are these are two guys that are going to play interior. So you got a little bit more depth behind guys like Cam Ball and Torin Carter, Jayheim Thomas, Antonio Greer, linebacker, Arkansas again, has just done a fantastic job of going out and grabbing either quality depth or grabbing guys out of the portal that are going to be, uh, that are going to have quite a bit of production and probably start. And we've already kind of gone over several of those names. There's no reason why 10 wins isn't within reach. I think it is. I think that's their ceiling. Just being perfectly clear there, I'm not saying they're going to go 10-2 and two in 2023, but I do think that uh, 10 wins is absolutely within reach. We need your help, Star Fox.